Welcome to Swish and Flick, an all Potter podcast. Swish and Flick, everyone. The Swish and Flick. Hello and welcome to episode 161 of Swish and Flick. I'm Tiffany. I'm Megan. I'm Katie. And I'm Sarah. And we are joined today by a very (laughs) special guest host, Vanessa, from the Don't Call Me Crazy podcast. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. That's the voice. (laughs) Welcome, 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 welcome. So Vanessa's goal <laughs> is to destigmatize talking about mental illness, which is something that we all absolutely love because on our podcast, as you know, we oftentimes talk about the things that we go through or have gone through. So Vanessa, truly welcome. Um, I hope you're buckled up because <laughs> be a wild ride. you never know what happens on Swish and Flick, as you know, but we're really excited to do this collaboration with you. I am too. I'm really, really excited. This has been uh, something I have been hoping to do for a long time. Mm. I'm obsessed with Harry Potter <laughs> and, you know, I I like mental, I like talking about mental health. Mm. So I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So listeners, today we will be discussing the first half of our topic. So we are covering Harry Potter and mental health. So kind of like in the Felix Files, Before we dive into our topic, we're going to get to know our guests through their Potter profile. And we also want to ask you about your passion about talking about mental health. So um, my name is Vanessa. Um, My Hogwarts house is that I'm a Ravenclaw through and through. (laughs) Underrepresented. Um, I love books. Uh, I'm creative. I'm quirky. I need even name my daughter after Luna. Right. um, Just because I hope she lives her truest self too. Oh, that's Um, awesome. I feel like that should be the motto of the Ravenclaw house. Yeah. How old is your daughter? Weird. She is one year old as of two days ago. Yes. Oh, happy birthday. Well, happy birthday. Yes, uh, we just had a little Moana party. Oh, my god! Oh, my God. I love it. Yes. Get, get ready for the crazy toddler years. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have a three-year-old, too. Oh, so. oh, you already know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're potty training, believe me. I'm right in the thick of it. <laughs> Same Z's. So my wand is an alder wood, um, which I had to look up because I didn't remember. Um, <laughs> Phoenix feather core, 14 and a half inches, slightly springy flexibility. And I took this off wiki because, again, I'm a Ravenclaw, so I have to research everything. Um, alder is not obstinate, is loyal, and is considerate and very likable, which I liked. Oh, you can stay. Uh, you seem nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Phoenix Feather <laughs> is suitable for a witch or wizard who will make a mark on the world. Love it. I think that my wand what is Alder. Oh, oh. aren't you guys just super cool? I can't remember. I need to I need to check now. But I can do this. <laughs> By the way, the website, the new website, the Wizarding World, is mm-hmm. very difficult to use. Uh, I'm sorry to yeah, yeah. talk bad about it. Don't be sorry. Um, There's I no couldn't search find button. any. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, there's no search button. <laughs> it's, yeah, Am I just it's supposed to the Google worst. everything? I'm really unsure as to who the web designer was, but uh, maybe they don't want us to look up anything. It's not my business. <laughs> well, <it's> maybe <laughs> because they about deleted it. many things all the time. <laughs> just saying. Um, I I remember recreating it because I wanted a different Patronus, and I got the same Patronus <laughs> over again, which is a salmon. Such a Megan uh, thing to do. Uh, <laughs> I love salmon. I, you didn't get 30 <laughs> salmons like Megan got 30 horses. <laughs> well, one kind of salmon, though. There's many different kinds of horses, right? Yeah, but you can get the same one over and over. Well, she got it twice. I, I, I know. I'm just saying got, she only did it twice. twice. Megan did it like 30 times. <laughs> Fair minimum. Actually, I think it was someone on the Swish and Flick, uh, like Swisher support group, um, that said that salmon are fierce mothers and Ooh. notorious for fighting against the current, I like which those. I like. Oh, that's so, cute. So I've like reclaimed salmon. I think that's awesome. As my Patronus. I'm okay with it now. There you go. I love that. Um, I need to do that with mine. <laughs> I, have I don't know what what is redeeming about a vol. Someone tell me. Thank you. They got really cool claws. They're cute. <laughs> they're, they're cute. They're cute. I uh, think okay. are cool. <laughs> Salmon are um, cool. 
my wand would is alder so that's cool oh, just saying i yeah, just checked cool. my passport twinsies <laughs> <laughs> nice uh did anyone was anyone able to find the ilvermorny house sorting on the website because i, I couldn't find it i think they've it taken gone. it all down yeah is oh really mm-hmm. i think it's gone oh Whoa. Well, i remember well, mine but like it's a part of the fantastic beast stuff coming out and yeah, but just like, also poof. maybe, well, like, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're backtracking from all of Fantastic Beasts. They're just, they're, they're like, They're filming, ah. though. <laughs> they're filming they in filming? October. Yeah. They're, oh. they're, they're filming in October. Yeah, they were already oh. spotted doing stuff. Well, maybe they wanted to change something with Ilvermorny. Maybe Who they didn't knows? like the original. I don't know. Who but, knows? Um, I found the test again and um, on some random website. I don't know if it's a real website, <laughs> but I got Pukwudgie, uh, which is the healer. And I'm okay with that. I feel like that fits. So I'm happy with that. Um, I know that the Horn Serpent was a close second. And I think that's the one that's associated with Ravenclaw. But I've always been like a Raven Puff. Mm. So I'm okay with being a Puck. Serpent, <laughs> <laughs> a horned what? Widgey, a horned widgey. Oh my god, I like <laughs> that, that one. one. <laughs> um, and then my Potter story. Um, how I got into Potter is I've been reading it um, basically since like the late nineties, like 1999, 1998. When I was, when I was between middle school and high school, I found the first three books at the library. I read through them. I've been obsessed ever since. Um, I believe, and I was looking up dates and the fourth book came out in 2000 and the first movie came out in 2001. So I do remember feeling very in the know for having read the first <laughs> couple books before the movie came out, which is also a very Ravenclaw uh, yeah. way to feel. I feel yeah. Like. I was like that. Cause I, I, I read all of them before the first movie came out too. And I was like, I know all these things. And then it's like, you see the first movie and you're like, oh my gosh. But also like, there are some things that that's different. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me explain this to you. Yeah. And let me explain this to you. It's literally me with Marty every time. And I'm like, this didn't happen. This didn't happen. And he goes, excuse me. I just watched it. So yes, it happened. And I was like, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i um like megan and katie i read a lot of fan fiction especially back in high school i feel like the heyday of fan fiction was after the fourth book came out everyone was waiting for the fifth book mm. which took years it was like four years and the first movie had come out and the internet was a thing finally i know young swishers <laughs> don't know that yeah. that life anymore but it was the internet wasn't really a thing before then yeah simpler times man yeah yeah really. so i've always been i've just i've loved harry potter forever um but i kind of got back into harry potter because of swish and flick so thank you girls um Aww, yeah <laughs> I think during my first uh, pregnancy with my older son, Lincoln, I listened to every episode that was out at the time um, of your podcast. Um, and it was actually my first introduction to podcasting at all. I didn't know what a podcast was before that. Mm-hmm. I know that, that that makes me feel really old. Good but first I didn't pick. know what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good first pick. She says Pat so yourselves humbly. on the back. <laughs> says the hovel. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i for all for all you fans out there i'm pretty sure i made them think i was crazy because when we were planning this episode um i told them it was nice to talk to them and have them talk back <laughs> <laughs> and i also asked them if it was weird that i know so much about them and they don't know anything about me uh, well now you <laughs> can't say that also- anymore we know about you now <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you've got you've got a couple pages here written out. <laughs> study it, guys. Study. <laughs> but uh, my my issues with postpartum are actually what kind of brought me to Swish and Flick, brought me back to Harry Potter, and also kind of brought about this idea of my podcast about mental illness. Um, because even though I work in the field of psychiatry, I had never really experienced mental illness before that. Um, but when I was pregnant with my three-year-old son, Lincoln, and then with my, my Luna a year ago, I dealt with severe 
postpartum, um, which was debilitating. I had postpartum anxiety, um, postpartum depression. I couldn't sleep. I had constant panic attacks. Um, I basically just felt incapable of, I don't know, managing life. Um, but Swish and Flick helped me. And the conversations I had with people about mental health helped me so much. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to start a podcast kind of about mental health. Love it. It's awesome. That's awesome. That's super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I kind of want to also point you in the direction, not to like set things up, but to also set things up. Um, Someone I went to high school with, and I've promoted her on the podcast and on my Instagram page before, is her name is Chelsea, and she holds a group called Postpartum Together. And she often does podcasts about postpartum. And so I think if you two hooked up that would make for some really great episodes. That would be really awesome. Actually. Um, especially because like I, on my, on my show, it's kind of, it's just me, Mm -hmm. but I have guests on because I don't really like talking to myself for an hour at a time. So I I usually have my guests on. Um, but I've been wanting to talk about postpartum specifically, Mm -hmm. especially because it's kind of what brought about the whole idea of my podcast Mm -hmm. and, what you know the kind of mental illness struggles that i've dealt with and so it would be it'd be great to talk to another expert well i will help you set that up thank you you're so welcome awesome source um so uh, just to kind of give you an introduction of my podcast uh, the official intro is don't call me crazy uh a podcast to normalize discussions around mental illness as it intersects with race gender sexuality economics history and more um it's kind of a variety show i talk to the people in my life about mental illness um and because i work in the field of psychiatry as well i hope that i offer something with my experience um i also have these history history episodes because surprise i'm a ravenclaw (laughs) and i love you know i love history i actually was an archaeologist before i was a nurse so my my interests are are varied and wide um and i hope to showcase that more on my podcast so i hope you take a listen because the girls will be on my show next Mm -hmm. yes we will Vanessa, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not speaking for myself, but you seem pretty rad, so I'm excited yeah. to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you do seem pretty Thank rad. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> I said rad, not red. That was really bad. I'm so sorry. That was the worst joke ever. <laughs> the dad jokes. Oh my gosh. They're oh, good job. Oh, okay. They're oh. flying. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassment over here now now i'm turning it oh my gosh okay we have any more we're ready to go uh, i think i think i've hit all my points right uh hogwarts house over morning house Juan patronus how i got into potter and how i came to talk about mental health okay done and done right? awesome <laughs> okay so I believe it's going to be myself, Megan, and Katie leading discussion points on this episode. That doesn't mean everybody else will remain silent. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know the meaning of that word. Correct, you do not. (laughs) But then um, on the second half, Sarah and Vanessa will be leading points. It's that's because the cool kids go last. Yeah, no, the cool kids club is on the second episode. Ravenclaw. Get ready for. Facts. The, the nerds. Facts. I'm pretty sure that's what I said. It's the, isn't it the red house, the green house, the the foodie house because they like food, and mm-hmm. then the cool house, which is the Ravenclaw. <laughs> sure. Facts. Sure. I guess we're just too mainstream, Tiffany. We're just colors. <laughs> Those okay. guys make up Christmas. Everybody yeah, wants we are to Christmas. be us. That's the coolest. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on who you ask. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome okay so the first talking point that we have is kind of within the harry potter universe so we've said it a million times as far as mental health goes harry potter universe is like 
stuck in the dark ages, right? Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, it's except and for it's chocolate. Fitting. Excuse well, me. <laughs> it's fitting that we're talking about this now because, like, the last couple of episodes, I feel like we've dealt a lot, specifically, obviously, the, I almost called the movies, the, sh- the, um, uh, books. I was going to call it a show. <laughs> the show. I wish it was a show. It's all about Harry Potter. But, like, right now, it's a big chunk, like, and especially this book in general, because we're on, um, Order of the Phoenix is with mental health and Harry's mental health and the things he's gone through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's fitting. He I has feel like. problems in this book. He does. He's, he, has, really? he has problems in every is single he book. In this book. I think, <laughs> I think losing your parents, both of them in a horribly horrific way. And then growing up with the Dursleys is going to make you need some therapy. Which is not a bad thing. I need therapy. Everybody should get therapy. Talk to someone. It's good to have yeah, conversations. Is cool. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> So the only real like medical professionals we hear about, well, we hear about Madame Pomfrey. She's one, but then the healers at St. Mungo's. So basically a healer is just (laughs) somebody who's a qualified witch or wizard who helps the sick and injured with some magic, you know, maybe (laughs) trial and error of some uh, muggle stitches. You don't know. You don't know what you're getting into there, but truthfully, that's like, all we really hear about yeah yeah but we also had to think too like this is from harry's perspective and one i think this was written in a time where like mental health wasn't talked about a lot and a lot of times like it's 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 like a um stigma for men to talk about their feelings and talk about things like this you know what i mean where like it shouldn't it shouldn't matter like what you look like what you identify as whatever it mm-hmm. should all be talked about. People are allowed to have feelings because uh, you're human. Unless there's yeah. aliens, which, you know, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Or wizards. Are, are witches and wizards human? I don't uh, know. Well, and I they, so. they have feelings, too. <laughs> Everybody has feelings. Talk about them. <laughs> but, but something I wanted to say, too, is like, yeah, it's from Harry's perspective. But if there was any sort of mental health within the wizarding world i am sure they would be asking of all kids in the world they would be asking this kid yeah yeah harry mm-hmm. if he was okay if he needed some extra help because right. i mean he's got he's got especially in the fifth go- book has mm-hmm. like all the classic signs of like trauma yeah trauma yeah. Trauma, trauma with a capital t yeah. yeah so yeah i mean it's just it's a world without yeah yeah i agree and even though it is a magical world we're like crazy things can happen like turning a stone in your hand and there's some people coming back <laughs> you oh know? i was like what are you talking <laughs> <Yeah>. about <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's still like stigma against people who are quote mad or crazy mm-hmm. and they even like for example luna loony love good she's you know She's weird. She thinks different things. She believes in things that nece- you necessarily can't see. They Thestrals are real. So it's like, you know, yeah. you never know. Well, people can see them. I know, but like not everybody can. So Correct. she gets these like, maybe she's the only one that can see the Nargles. You never know. Yeah, I mean. Crumple horns, not there axe, could, man. There could be. <laughs> if i mean if if there's a wizarding world that muggles can't see maybe there's a nargle world that only luna can see yeah you know you never know and i mean her family is the one who has believed for for forever that you know i mean spoilers but you know the deathly hallows exist mm-hmm. right. um that was considered something that was just like a you know a fairy tale mm-hmm. within the harry potter world hermione so. was so ready to completely brush off that story she even fought harry pretty much like against well and it. that's that's one of like a downfall for hermione you know what i mean like she's very much like if i can't see it and i can't prove it then it's not real it's not true and i'm just gonna write you off where like she needs to be a little bit more open more open-minded Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, so Thankfully to go along, she learns. A little. Oh, yes. Uh, well, and Harry even like has a moment where he thinks he doesn't really want to like rub it in her face that he was right about the hallows. But he like <laughs> yeah. he, he still like looks at her like, yeah, you should have listened. <laughs> but those were I told you so. Eyes. Oh, for sure. For sure. So. 
So Luna's father, Xenophilius Lovegood, goes along with that because people, when he comes to the wedding, um, Bill and Flora's wedding, dressed in yellow sun colors, they say, you know, people were like talking about how he was like a little crazy. And then Crumb goes up to him in the Deathly Hollow symbol like we were talking about. So you know, people think that they're eccentric that and crazy. Well, and like, did, didn't they have issues like that? They wore such bright colors. Is that, or is that not true? Well, they just thought it was weird that they wore those bright colors, but it's Luna was like, you wear sun colors. It's a happy occasion. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I'd I, be mad if someone showed up to white at my wedding, but like, other than that, I'm going to wear the whitest dress. I, can I mean, honestly, I don't think I'd be that mad, <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but I mean, like, uh, you should you should wear something that's color like I don't think I don't know that's just it's a dumb. celebration. <laughs> um. <laughs> I did. I totally as an aside. I saw this one like in a wedding magazine thing where um, the bride and all of the bridesmaids wore all of their former wedding gowns. Oh my oh. god! Because you know you might as yeah. well reuse, right? Yeah. Reuse, reuse, re- recycle. So oh my <laughs> wait, goodness. reuse, reduce. Reduce. Yeah. Recycle. Okay. We know you might. <laughs> the only reason why I remember that is because of Rocco's Modern Life. <clears throat> it's Rocco's Modern Life. Modern life. <laughs> I don't, I don't really like so, Professor Trelawney, um, our lovely divination professor, you know, people think that she's absolutely bonkers. I mean, and really, you know, I don't know what Mr. Lovegood is, not like house wise, but like both Trelawney and Luna are Ravenclaws. I think, um, I, I think Xenophilius is a Ravenclaw. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I think the thing with Ravenclaws is like a lot of time, like I'll be a thousand percent honest. I know I'm real weird. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah, we know. I'm real weird. <laughs> I raised my hand I, not to speak, but to say I too am weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's one thing like... I'm not always the greatest of like, um, being like completely like who I like Luna, like does not give a fig. You know what I mean? Like she's <laughs> an Arabella is going to wear whatever she wants. And I do do that. But a lot of times like what I want to wear is like, I wear like people will be wearing loungewear. I have like jeans on and a nice shirt just cause that's what I'm comfortable in. But like weirdness aside, I think a lot of Ravenclaws are like think outside the box and are just a little weird, which is cool. I agree. Which is why we're the cool house. That, okay. We didn't forget. <laughs> Bringing it back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harry hearing voices during Chamber of Secrets is also something that was like real crazy for people. And also mm-hmm. when he spoke parcel tongue to the snake, people were, they flipped out about that because obviously, you know, he's a dark wizard and whatnot. Blah, blah, yes. blah. He is. His hair is dark. He's part dark wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go first, Megan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really quick. I was, I was just going to say that like Harry hearing voices and like the reaction that Ron gives him and even yep. Hermione gives him is just, um, it's, it just like makes it even more clear the fact that like there is no help in the wizarding world. Like the fact that Ron was just like, even here that's not normal and like not even like maybe we should go talk to somebody (laughs) it was just like that's not normal don't talk about it like well that's how people do that's like how people like i remember in high school and talking to my friends being like i couldn't remember if i was like hey i don't know if i was like having an anxiety attack or something and i was like telling my mom about it and i said something i had said told her that i had said to them like i was like sad or i was something something along those lines and she's like but why would you tell them that like i wouldn't tell them that blah 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 blah. and i'm like i'm just a super open person so i was like well i i I don't know i'm like wouldn't you tell your friend she's like no she's like we don't talk about that not she didn't say it like that but basically like there's things you don't tell people you know what i mean yeah which now I'm like, I'll tell you anything you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't, isn't there that country song, like, Hide Your Crazy? Mm. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, but I yeah, feel Miranda like that's Lambert. Like the, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. But I feel like that's kind of like the, the going trend, especially mm-hmm. in the Wizarding World, which does feel very stuck in the Dark Ages. Yeah. And, like, even kind of reeling it back a little bit to divin- uh, Professor Trelawney and divination, even though divination is technically like a like a real 
a subject that people study Mm -hmm. at Hogwarts. It's considered very out there, very like you're crazy, like most inconsistent branch of magic. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not like scientific. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's so interesting because it's the wizarding world. So like, you think that they would be like way more open-minded to like, this is divination. We're doing magic. You're literally making things appear out of nowhere, you know, stuff like that. But they're like, Oh, you can't do this. And you can't do that. Like sometimes they're more closed minded than muggles. Hmm. And muggles. Indeed. They don't know nothing, do they? (laughs) Nope. Um, and then moving on, it's in the name, Mad Eye Moody. (laughs) This poor fellow. Poor guy. This, yeah, um, definite classic signs of PTSD. This, this is um, kind of like a war vet, if you will. He's been through some things, been through some stuff. I wonder too. Like, I would assume if edge. you've seen him, there are parts of him missing from action. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he's been through the ringer. So like they've done studies on football players that keep getting concussions. Like you yeah. keep getting hurt your whole, like your brain changes. Yeah. Um, so like, I wonder too, if like, yes, obviously he's been through some traumatic things and like you said, with like soldiers and other things like that, like there, those are traumatic events, but mm-hmm. you also, he might be literally alter, altering his physical brain that's going to alter his mental status. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, too, I mean, even, even before he got locked in a, uh, you know, a trunk yeah. for an entire year, he was known for co- for saying constant vigilance, yeah. you know, for having this kind of like obsessive, um, paranoid Mm -hmm. personality Mm -hmm. um but the thing about paranoia is it's a defense mechanism for when you are constantly under attack yeah you do have to have constant vigilance Mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what comes out of that kind of constantly being at war um is this ptsd Mm -hmm. type Mm -hmm. you know uh effect and then also on on your point sarah um TBIs, so traumatic brain injuries, mm-hmm. they they do. They they like alter your brain chemistry and your your ability to process thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, you you often are more aggressive. You see the world in black and white more often. There's there's good and there's bad. Mm-hmm. And that's so much of Mad Eye Moody in the later books mm-hmm. when he's truly Mad Eye Moody and what do you guys call him? Judy, Judy when he's yeah. not Judy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when it's Junior so, being Moody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> When when it's actually Mad Eye being Mad Eye in the last couple of books, yeah. something that kind of bothered me about his character is that it always seemed like he thought, you know, the good guys were only good mm-hmm. and the bad guys were only bad. And he kind of he didn't he had a lot of trouble with gray characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so Harry true. sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. Because what Cause like the chapter it? we just read, he like made a comment mm-hmm. about Harry, like kind of being like, "Well, can we like Dumbledore saying this?" And like he did witness this attack. He so, was probably like, ready to like really distance himself from Harry because of all those things. Like or like if Harry's I, corrupted, and no pun intended. Yeah. Maybe uh-huh. keep a closer eye on him. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Constant vigilance. He's got to watch him. And I, I feel mean. like Moody was preyed upon definitely by um, Barty Crouch Jr. I mean, mm-hmm. that was really that was an easy target, I think, especially to like make up the story about the dustbins after and whatnot. People just, oh, you know, it's just Mad Eye being Mad Eye. You know, he has yeah. that reputation well, for think, that because he yeah. never had any kind of help to deal. Yeah. Um, muggles are depicted as being dim witted. They don't see nothing, do they? I feel like this is like a common trope in things like this and stories where like there's magic or there's something mm-hmm. and then they're the regular quote people. They're like, oh, wow. Lesser. We have all of these things we can do. But like, I don't know. Muggles have a pen that just writes. You don't have to dip it in ink. <laughs> so. <laughs> Not wrong, Sasa. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> but moving on, and this is, um, I feel like I wonder if people often forget this scene from the books when they go into the Department of Mysteries and there's the brain room. Um, so 
we can probably assume that there's some kind of study on the brain or the brain is used in some kind of way because we know that when Ron touches them, they kind of latch onto him and wrap themselves around him. So, yeah. So the brain room, which is really, we don't really know what it's called, is on the ninth level of the Department of Mysteries. And the concept of thought and all related subjects like are studied in this chamber. So probably something to do with, I don't know where they get the brains from <laughs> the people in the lake. <laughs> I mean, it, it think was, about, <clears throat> oh, I think about Megan. like they, um, people donate their bodies to science. Maybe there's, oh, I which is lizards that donate. I bet you they took them. You think? Cause yeah. Cause back in the day when they were doing like, um, like studies on anatomy, they were grave robbing and just stealing bodies. So that's to me, that's what the wizarding world would do. So they don't want people to know. Cause I don't, I don't know if they'd want people to know like the study, like who, how many people knew that they had this brain room? You know what I mean? Well, it is in the department of mystery. So you can only be an unspeakable or, you know, teenagers. I mean, at Hogwarts and maybe they're taking brains from people that are dying in Azkaban. Oh, that's a would really not surprise good me. point. That yeah. would also not surprise me. People whose souls they take, why not just take their brain as well? <gasps> that's yeah. deep and sorry, sweaty. That's, that's deep and dark. But I mean, you and twisted I, I soul. Hate, I hate to be on Like, this happens. Like, they literally, like, back when they were truly mm-hmm. studying anatomy, they were stealing bodies. I'm sure stuff happened. Got people from Alcatraz people, they, and all that. They kind of do. Um, and I know in the past in prisons, they would... Um, like do experiments and stuff on. Yes, I do know that of. I believe Germany. it's illegal now in the United States. Well, I it could be, should be. Goodness correct. Gracious. You should have consent from the person you're doing this to. Vanessa, do you have something well, to add? Yeah. So I was just going to say also to that point, like a lot of the. So I had mentioned earlier that I formerly studied archaeology. Go, um, girl. That's my dream. <laughs> Besides podcasting. I specific, it, it was my dream too <laughs> until I couldn't I couldn't earn money but I'll retire I'll retire as an archaeologist is my plan I'll go with you but uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> we'll dig together <laughs> but uh a lot of the skeletons that we were using um so you cannot actually like trade like make money or trade or or buy skeletons anymore so a lot of the skeletons you're getting from like pre I think I don't know, 1995-ish is is when they stopped or they made laws against it. But a lot of the skeletons are from China mm. and are from, like, uh, I think the prison camps mm. there. Oh, gosh. So, sorry. Sorry. I remember there was, like, a that. lawsuit. I, I don't know if it was, like, the exact bodies exhibit or one that was basically that. the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, and the way that they got those bodies basically is the same. That is... Allegedly, I should say. Goodness. I don't... Well, <laughs> we went down a. Let's take a turn. Chalk it up to the two Ravenclaws to make this super uh, weird. And, I mean, this is stuff that just uh, I, this no, is so it, morbid, but this is stuff that really truly no, fascinates me. It's fine because even like, um, my mom had gone, um, with my aunt. She at the time had cancer to talk about like what was going to happen like after she inevitably passed away, um. And we know a lot of people in the funeral business. And so my mom just happened to ask. She was like, so, like, what happens? Like, what if they, like, want to change stuff? Like, after he's like, no, you can change whatever you want after they're gone. Like, it doesn't. She's like, so, like, what? What's the point of, like, not not what's the point, but she's just, like, kind of shocked. That, like, she's like, so they can make all of these plans, and then, like, their next of kin can change everything? He's like, yeah. That's bananas. <laughs> yeah. It does not seem okay. Yeah. I don't know how true that is with all places, but. Right. Yeah. Um, so back to the brain room. <laughs> so <laughs> back on time, let's talk about lives. <laughs> Live people. The the brain room chamber is long and rectangular. It's lit by lamps, um, low on gold chains hanging from the ceilings. It's quite empty except for a few desks that surround an enormous glass tank. It is containing a deep green liquid. Ooh, evil green thing. We're awake. <laughs> We're awake. And so there's pearly white brains drifting around inside it. So 
what I'm thinking is, is that when these unspeakables are at work, they're just like sitting around at their desks, looking at these brains and probably like doing whatever their study is. I wonder if they them. can pull things out of the brain. Well, I, like I don't know. When, like a pencil? But, yeah. When removed from the, the potion in the tank, the brains would fling out tendrils of thoughts. Ooh. Which could seriously injure someone because they're wrapping you up. Thought sting. Like, yeah. I don't know if that's so, what saying. It's then almost I just like they're up. weaponizing them. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't that's going to be words hurt. That's this terrifying. This makes me think of that new Hunger Games book. Ooh. What is that yeah, saying? Kind of. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. But they can. Yep. They can. <laughs> uh, Taylor Swift would say uh, snakes and stones never broke her bones. Mm. Mm-hmm. Little snaky snakes. Um, mm-hmm. And then we do know that um, the quote crazy people are often locked away. See Lockhart. Yeah, Lockhart and Neville's parents. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, I don't know, kind of like Barty Crouch Jr. locked up by his dad, essentially. Yeah, they just like oh, yeah, okay, throw him but away. He- with with that, it's different. He was a fugitive. <laughs> yeah. So he was really kind of mostly hiding because he should have been in Azkaban where he belonged because he helped torture and like essentially ruin the lives of Longbottoms. Well, for sure. Um, but that I would I would assume that's why he was mostly locked up was because he should have been in Azkaban. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. So Neville's parents. Um And then Vanessa went ahead and did a couple of things for me. So comparing Neville's parents to dementia or um, psychotic break. So just a couple things on dementia. It's awful. And there are some stages that people go through. You can listen to me talk about my own personal yeah. journey with it in the next episode. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm kind of going through a similar situation as Sasa with my own grandmother. Oh. So that's terrible. But, yeah, it's, you know, we're doing what we can do. So a lot of times people with dementia, they go through some aggression and anger. Maybe they go through some anxiety, agitation, They could go through depression. They could have hallucinations. There, of course, is what people mostly associate it with is memory loss and confusion. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of, like, repetition that they need. They Mm -hmm. need more information. They need that security and comfort over and over and over again. Sometimes they have sleep issues. Sometimes they feel suspicious of people and they have delusions. And then... um, one of the things that we see in Harry Potter is that sometimes they will wander. So they do that. And no, I'm at that. What? Wander. Yeah. I know. In the wizarding world. No, I'm saying we see that in the wizarding world. Let me continue. No. With Lockhart. When we meet him in Christmas on the, the closed ward, the healer says that, you know, he, must have wandered out of where he was supposed to be. And that's why they met up with him essentially. So yeah, Neville's parents. I mean, we dove pretty deep into that. Um, I think that's a future episode from it's this episode. Next weekend. <laughs> so you'll hear it next week. So we recorded it in the past, but you're going to yeah. hear it in the future. <laughs> it's, a <little> trippy, man. <laughs> it's real. It's getting real weird here. But yeah, so do you want to talk a little more about that, Vanessa? Yeah, I um, something that I wanted to mention that we'll probably talk in more detail a little later too is um, Neville's parents are kind of they're they follow some of the symptoms of dementia, but also a lot of symptoms of like a psychotic break, Mm, right? mm -hmm. They had this traumatic event that happened to them, the uh, torture over and over and over again, that basically, I don't know if magic can cause a traumatic brain injury, um, but that's almost like what happened to them because it's, I mean, we've, 
they they don't we we haven't seen them violent, but they don't know what's going on. You know, they're basically at the mentality of like a two or three year old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, It's clear from what you're reading in the books that are in the chapter. I think you guys are going to talk about soon um, that they can interact with the world, but it's, it's like they have no long-term memory Mm -hmm. um, and no memory of history of the past, um, which can often happen with a traumatic event, like what they went through. Um, And so it's with, Neville's parents it's a little it, it's hard to pin down as like a specific um it's a made up magical malady mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's kind of like a mix of dementia and a psychotic break yeah um it's very sad all around yeah. so I was reading about um so is a psychotic break also called psychosis um yes okay yes so it just what I'm looking up here, something namey.org, National Alliance of Mental on Mental Illness dot mm-hmm. org. It says just says that psychosis is characterized as disruptions to a person's thoughts and perceptions that make it difficult for them to recognize what is real and what isn't. So we don't really know if they experienced that per se. I mean, all we really see we don't really see his dad. Mm-mm. We mm-hmm. really just see his mom kind of like, kind of just like walking slow in her little robe and handing him the gum wrappers. So it's almost like, I don't know. I would, I would think though, that like, if you were put under the Cruciatus <laughs> curse for that long, that it would make you have a psychotic break. I wonder if, yeah. And I wonder too, like, and, and I don't know if this is factual or if it's just my head cannon that like it attacks the nerves. So you have literal, in my mind, you have literal nerve damage from being under the Cruciatus curse that long. You know what I mean? I would think that there's would literal you? damage. So, okay. Well, so, for sure, literal damage, but I'm saying like, I, I think specifically it attacks the nerves to the point where like, you're going to have a psychotic break. You're going to have, a change, you know, it's not what I wanted to, to look all up. that stuff. So I was thinking about like, I just remembered this term from way back when in biology, the syn- synapse, right? Mm-hmm. So the junction between nerves, right? So yeah. do you think that if something physical happened, maybe those were destroyed? Yeah, I mean, I've read a lot of fan fictions where that happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, where they, you know, they kind of get into, like, the nitty-gritty, yeah. like, yeah. science no, of it. Like- um, that the Cruciatus actually, because the thing is, is, right, it's it's causing physical pain, yeah. but there's nothing visual. Right. So the idea is that it would work on, on you on a biological level, mm-hmm. which would then be your your nerve endings, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So you activate nerves enough and they can become overstimulated and basically fry. That's um, kind of what I was thinking would be like the physical part of it where they just, there's so much of it destroyed. They're left with only so much. Like she knows how to walk, uh, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, oh. Perhaps knows how to chew gum. Like those are all things that I wonder if she had to relearn those. Like how far did it go with the physical things that she could remember how to do does frank not get out of bed because he couldn't maybe relearn those things you know what i'm saying well and i I probably should have looked this up beforehand and this might relate to megan's section on characters but specifically um i and i've seen this in my practice in mental health but disassociative Mm. disorders um is actually I didn't I didn't mean psychotic break uh, I meant more a dissociative disorder. Okay. So that's actually and I'm reading this out of the DSM the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual on Mental Disorders. Um, it's this characterized by <laughs> right <laughs> by a disruption and or discontinuity in the normal integration of consciousness, memory, identity, emotion, perception, body represent- representation, motor control, and behavior. So you're actually disassociating from the real world Mm -hmm. which seems to fit neville's parents the best and it can happen with a you know a very traumatic event yeah um i've seen it personally happen with people who have taken who might have like uh already a propensity for schizophrenia but then they take street drugs right Mm -hmm. and 
and that causes them to have disassociation where they lose the ability and street drugs often overload your your body systems and it causes you to kind of disconnect from the world around you Mm -hmm. that sounds pretty close sounds pretty close i never thought about it that deep and it just made me even like more sad and angry for neville yeah that sucks yeah yeah it's awful yeah it's truly awful and to just like have to know that that is where your parents are stuck and like there's Mm -hmm. nothing you can do to help them there's nothing that you can like you just have to come to terms with it right like Mm -hmm. even if the wizarding world were further along with mental health did more than put band-aids on issues yeah i don't think they could i really don't know if they could fix this at all Mm mm-hmm but they haven't tried. That, yeah, it doesn't seem like it, at least. Yeah. 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 I guess we don't <laughs> know that for sure. But I just like, I guess I don't have faith in their mm. ability with mental health to believe that they did try everything they could. Maybe that's what they're doing in the brain room. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that is. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I just have always seen like it. They like. <laughs> With the dementia, there's only so much you can do. You know what I mean? Because it's pretty genetic. I can't say words. Um, with that, as- yes, with that aspect of it, you know, because um, that's rough. It's just rough. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, moving on to somebody else who we saw in Saint Mungo's would be Gildory Lockhart, and that um, he's related to having amnesia. And I think that was something that was pretty spelled out for us. That's not something that we necessarily have to like guess as far as what happened with him. Mm. So amnesia refers to the loss of memories, such as facts, information and experiences. Um, though also forgetting your identity is something that is also sometimes common, but not in the movies, but not necessarily like real life. Um, I wish that we could have seen a little bit more into his like, I guess recovery, but like, I, I would want to know, like, can he make new memories? You know what I mean? Does he have that ability? Cause it doesn't seem like he does. The only thing I could say to say that maybe he could is his relationship with the healer. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like whoever he was talking to, I forget what, if we ever learned her name. Um, but like, obviously she knows him cause she works there and he's been there for so Mm -hmm. long, but like, he doesn't seem to like, I would think that he would be like, oh, so and so, you know what I mean? So we don't get to see too much of that. Like, it just is him. And maybe this is just the way she thought to write him was like, I want to sign autographs. They want autographs. Like, in the back of his head, he has that instinct of, like, that's this is something what I do. That's something I would do. Like, I have a, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And not like, because we don't get to see like a conversation with him with someone he knows since then. Yeah, who knows if he has any family or it seems as if, I mean, she said nobody really comes to visit him. So I think everybody kind of parted their ways with Gildoroy Lockhart. But symptoms of amnesia, difficulty learning new information following the onset of amnesia. That is anterograde, anterograde amnesia. And then difficulty remembering past events and previously familiar information, retrograde amnesia. So they have people, nope, people with amnesia have um, problems with their short-term memory. They can't retain new information. Recent memories are most likely to be lost, while more remote or deeply ingrained memories may be spared. So makes sense if he remembers that writing autographs is something that he does like they want pictures they want autograph they won't take no for an answer right he was pushy like that when he was you know um not with amnesia so there you go that's well and it's it's, and this is going down a little bit of a rabbit hole but it's interesting um, what J.K. Rowling left of his quote unquote personality, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't remember things, but his core, like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm narcissistic. Mm-hmm. I like to sign autographs, etc., is there. Mm-hmm. Well, oftentimes it, with a traumatic brain injury, you, your, per, your core personality is actually changed, mm-hmm. but um, maybe the, you know, what is the spell called again? 
Obliviate? The one that... Oh, yeah. Maybe Obliviate doesn't affect your brain in that way. You know, Mm -hmm. it affects memories, but it, maybe it doesn't affect your brain like a, you know, a knock to the head. Well, would cause amnesia in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I often wonder as we were talking about it, um, on our recording for the, for the episode where we meet him again. Um, we know that he wanted to use Obliviate to essentially wipe their memory, but we also don't really know what exactly happened to him or how that spell took because of the brokenness of Ron's wand. So, you know, whatever he was intending to do, I don't know if it was necessarily just a backfire or if it malfunctioned in some other way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it it obviously did what it meant to do. And then maybe a little bit more, you know, who knows? Yeah. Maybe it was like the ones, like it knew it was going out. It was broken. It was like, man, Ron, like this is our time. It's time to part. Did one (laughs) last thing to protect them. Well, and maybe. like, maybe it's one of those things where like, not all the time, but sometimes your own wand can't be used against you. Like basically True. how Harry won. Yeah. So th- there's also that factor. Yeah. I mean, there's like, cause this, this a whole thing. Like, I feel like magic is a little bit, um, it's so great. I wouldn't say unknown. What is the word I'm looking for? Hmm. Mm. Fickle friends. Unstable. Unpredictable. Yeah, fickle, unstable. <laughs> like. So, and especially a, a, a spell like Obliviate, because mm-hmm. I feel like you could just like Obliviate someone's whole life or you can Obliviate the last hour, just like you could probably do on your computer history. <laughs> oh, my, my Lord. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> um, but like, I wonder, you know, you had to have your intent behind it, a good working wand and a wand that's your own. But instead he's Lockhart. Um, he's using a broken wand against its owner. So I, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of into the unknown. And then, you know, Mm. he literally doesn't know he's into the unknown. He is the unknown. Yeah. Mm. So St. Mungo's oftentimes it seems has some patience and, uh, you know, they recover on their own kind of change bandages from time now and again maybe try some experimental stitches uh let's don't see like besides <laughs> devil snare plants are just running amok <laughs> muck, 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 muck. gildoy lockharts are just running amok they're just amok, running amok. Right? super amok but i don't know i mean the way that the it just seems like oh you've got this injury go over here they'll fix you like you fix it and you're gone or you're just like staying there for a little while yeah. i don't know how much uh, we also don't get to see i feel like we don't yeah. get to see a ton of we got to see arthur after he was stable yeah yeah i mean and i i i wonder how much of like an actual real life hospital it is you know what i mean because like, obviously charting. i've worked in i've worked in a hospital for 12 years no i haven't <laughs> 11 years <laughs> Why is that funny? Because I said twelve, and I I know but like, <laughs> twelve it, years. You know, it. so sometimes you 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 only get to see like bits and pieces of it, and you really like. Uh, I think the public a, a lot of times has no idea like what you do. Not not exactly what you do, but like how hospitals work. You know what I mean? They do not know how hospitals work, or don't work sometimes, like mangoes. I mean, you know. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So, at least they've at least they've got a place for people who can't take care of themselves. I mean, yeah, at sure. least the U.S. health system doesn't have that anymore. Even so, you're not. It's wrong. not all bad. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, wrong. I wonder, like, what they did. Like, did does it say like when Saint Mungo's like became Saint Mungo's? Who is Saint Mungo? Uh, it doesn't have a date. It it does it was like back in the what was it like the 1400s 1600s? all i can think of is like oh uh, that is the dark ages all of it <laughs> all i can think of is like things they like maybe they didn't evolve with the times it's, it's so crazy when you when you and again i like to know about the horrific things that have happened in history so like when you hear about like what the practices they used to do um back in the day to like cure people like they would literally drill holes in people's heads and think that that would help them. Or like, you know, back in the day, they'd like bleed people out. So they're like, oh, we're going to get rid of the bad, whatever. You know what I mean? Like not, none of this was like scientifically proven. 
So like, it's crazy to think like how much they've come yet, how much they haven't, how much, how far they've come. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, and then St. Mungo's. Oh, go ahead. St. Mungo's was founded by famous healer Mungo Bonham in the 1600s. 16s. So I don't Walk know what she did. She's literally all she's known for is being the founder. <laughs> so she probably did some healing. Well, something I just thought of too might be when did when did the was it in the Dark Ages that Muggles and uh, wizards and witches kind of separated i want to say yeah hold on at least, of secrecy. at least in um i want to say in the 1600s because at least um the in at least in america it's like kind of goes along with um 1692 and well and that's when isn't that when like the salem witch trials were going on um although the witch trials like a lot of witch trials happened a lot earlier in true europe been going on a long time um, in, in america they started then and then they didn't um their like whole no conversing like muggles and um <sighs> witches and witches i don't know why i was struggling to find that word they were allowed <laughs> to like basically integrate whatever in the 60s like 1960s like right around the time where like um segregation was no longer a thing you know in the 1960s mm-hmm are you talking about like America. relationships, like marriage? Well, I, between I think wasn't it? I think it was interracial the, marriage. Yeah, yeah. Interwizarding marriage. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they weren't even allowed to like in America at least they couldn't have any like commingling at all. Like you weren't supposed okay. to talk to Muggles. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. So on the lexicon, so they bring up the Salem witch trials, sixteen ninety two to ninety three. Very short. When people, I think when people think about it, it's um, not as long as people think it is. But I would really like to like redo that episode. You know what's interesting though that we've the Ministry there. of Magic was founded after St. Mungo's. Well, it says huh. and oh. after Hogwarts said that they matter. So. Okay. So the International Confederation of Wizards they held a summit in 1692 where they worked out, like, the details and responsibilities for each country's, like, wizarding government under their new laws. They decided that each Ministry of Magic would be responsible for, you know, sports and stuff in their own countries. Sports. And, yeah. So then they also talked about, like, magical beasts being hidden, spirits um, hidden from the Muggles, yada, yada, yada. And then... So... The statute resulted in the creation of the um, Ministry of Magic in Britain. Mm -hmm. And that's also the same year that the Magical Congress of the United States, Makuza, was I founded. I had that as a different year. I heard that it was created in 1693. Well, I have 92, according to the lexicon. Wow. Well, I guess we're going to have to look that Maybe up. Maybe it was on New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? So according to Fantastic Beasts, in 1750, Clause 73 was added to the statute, strengthening the requirement that each ministry would be responsible for the concealment of magical creatures within its territory or face sanction from the ICW. Um, according to the WizardingWorld.com, writings by, you know, the author, uh, Makuza <laughs> was created in 1693. Well, lexicon following the uh, secrecy meeting, the secret meeting that no one was supposed to know about. So something I think is really interesting and it makes sense is that, um, OK, so it was uh, sports and magical beasts mm -hmm. that made the statute of secrecy, right? Mm -hmm. Because those are the things that people would see the most is uh, apparently Quidditch was played so often and people were flying on brooms mm -hmm. and there were these balls flying everywhere so they wanted to hide magic because everyone wanted to play sports out in the open apparently <laughs> um and magical beasts because they're you know magical beasties and they're really obvious um but it's interesting that um health that saint mungo's would predate um some of these other things because magic and medicine are very linked historically right yes um and like magical treatments 
for maladies. Like the witch trials and things were actually oftentimes, and I'm going a little deep and sweaty into like human history, but a lot of the times it was women, you know, um, mixing herbs Mm -hmm. in the forest that, you know, and and birthing babies that were the people who were burned at stakes. And so the link between magic and medicine are very closely intertwined. So if there were a magical world, which I like to believe there is, Mm -hmm. um, uh, it would be that they would make a St. Mungo's right away because they, you know, they would want that to be separate from muggles. Mm -hmm. You'd think. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on to my last little point here, which is also a gigantic point. Um, (laughs) Talking about Ariana Dumbledore. So we know from talking with Aberforth in the Hogshead in Seven when Harry, Ron, and Hermione um, come back to get the final Horcrux. Um, We hear a little bit about her because he kind of knows that Hermione's been reading Rita Skeeter, right? So he goes into a little quick blip. It says, when my sister was six years old, she was attacked, set upon by three muggle boys. They'd seen her doing magic, spying through the back garden hedge. She was a kid and she couldn't control it. No witch or wizard can at that age. What they saw scared them, I expect. They forced their way through the hedge, and when she couldn't show them the trick, they got a bit carried away trying to stop the, quote, little freak doing it. So they essentially attacked her. So they left her scarred and damaged, and as far as wizardingworld.com goes, quote, mentally unstable and afraid to perform magic. Her powers turned inwards, which was extremely dangerous, And Aberforth described her as mostly a sweet and scared and harmless girl. But when she was upset or angry, magic would explode out of her and she would become, quote, strange and dangerous. So this in turn kind of turns us to also think about Fantastic Beast Mm -hmm. and if Ariana is an obscurial. Right. So we see that, you know, we know Credence Credence. is one. And so the way that the author describes Ariana is kind of the same thing that we see happening with Credence. Mm -hmm. And obviously Ariana has trauma that has been untreated because she was never allowed to go anywhere. And I highly doubt anybody came to the home to help them out. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, keep it hush, hush. We're handling this as a family. Yeah. Especially and, all that way back in time. And it took forever. <laughs> That's how to roll weird. For Sorry. <laughs> even like their neighbor, Bathilda Bagshot to kind of even get close to Kendra Dumbledore mm-hmm. to even like speak with her. And, um, Vanessa put in here that abused children often become aggressive in defense to real or perceived threats. And I can, for one, with my experience um, being an early childhood educator and working with kids that have suffered trauma and continue to suffer trauma as I teach them um, from their homes or, you know, what have you, you know, I do see that aggression and you know, luckily I'm able to try and set them up with some help, but it's not, it's not like that in the wizarding world. Mm -hmm. And then those children, you know, grow with that. Well, I I wonder too, because they don't have any help and they don't talk about it. They die. Like they said that like, usually they don't last till their teenage years. Correct. Um, because the credence the, was old for, um, having an, obs- for being an obscurial. Correct? Well, and the thing with him is like, we don't know his whole journey either. You know what I mean? So, um, Who knows? it's just, it's an interesting mm-hmm. thing. Cause we don't see all of the trauma that Ariana went through, but we get to see at least a glimpse of the trauma that credence goes through being in that house. And like, they're literally hunting witches. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of, 
that trauma, and then he's being used by Colin Randy. Firth's Farrell, nope. Colin Farrell's character, whose name I can't I remember. I think that that's just proof Brindable. of the trauma in general that goes along with, um, oh gosh, what are they called? I'm blanking. Like what? Obscurial? Obscurial? Obscure, yeah, an obscurial. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> like the trauma involved in like a child even becoming an obscurus clearly like that is a whole other can of worms you know what i mean like yeah there are reasons why that happens and there's i would say probably a hundred percent of the time it's due due to some sort of abuse yeah mm-hmm. well, for sure because so they're so far suppressing of our knowledge that we know right. yeah 100 percent. i wonder if and this i mean it's related can you like if you are a kid or whatever, and you become an obscurious, so you're showing signs of it. Can you like backtrack if you start I working think, on it? I think so. Does it like, is there like, like a heal? point where like you can't return anymore? I would think. I'm just curious. I mean, you can, you can with in, in the real world in real, in psychiatry. Mm, I true. mean, we, so I, I work, um, and I can't go too into it because of confidentiality, but I work primarily with, um, abused children. Um, children who've experienced trauma Mm -hmm. in the psychiatry field and the two main diagnoses all of my kids have is oppositional defiance Mm. disorder um dmdd so that's disruptive mood dysregulation disorder and um, intermittent explosive Mm. disorder and intermittent explosive disorder is basically this ariana Mm -hmm. in a nutshell yeah i mean it's it's that you are unable to regulate your moods Mm -hmm. because you've experienced such trauma that you know you explode yeah it's in the name yeah um ariana just has the the magical version of it yeah so you know we can work through these things with children um in you know the muggle world Mm -hmm. so you should be able to work through it in the magical world now if there were treatments i don't see any evidence of them unfortunately in the magical world and you know in the dark ages like i like to think of the harry potter world sometimes matt or um medicine wise um children that were that abused were not you know they didn't have therapies for them they didn't have medicines for them um so yeah back then they might not have had treatment but today we do yeah yeah and even through thinking like back then a lot of times if it was like a family matter like the family dealt with it and you didn't discuss you don't know if like yeah. say you were in a family that was abusive you know what mm-hmm. i mean that wasn't talked about and families mm-hmm. deal with how they deal with it and like because of the embarrassment that people think that they're going to face but you know guess what everybody's got their own stuff yeah. and a lot of the time we're dealing with similar things <laughs> i think too just the i mean the fact that an obscurus can even exist shows that there's clearly no treatment <laughs> right yeah i mean if there was treatment a child should never even get to that point. And, and like, I guess, I mean, I understand that like sometimes there are families out there who just don't believe in therapy or don't believe in like getting help for these sorts of things. So like those children could, I guess, become an obscurus, but like, I just feel like we wouldn't even know of two in this, in the series if, if Uh there was something. And, and I, I can't see, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe I could see the Dumbledore family just kind of hiding Ariana away because that is literally what they did. But I don't know if they would have done that had there been an option. I feel like they did that because they felt there was no other option. But we also well, don't really know enough about the Dumbledore family beyond Dumbledore to like know for sure, like how Kendra would or she was would described have, we don't as know being like enough. like we, haughty and you have to think like this is also in 1890 something right so what yeah. in the real world mm-hmm. did they have set up for people that were having issues true you know what i mean Very like true. right 30 years ago they didn't have a lot set up Good as much Lord. as they do now we're like leaps and bounds from 20 30 yeah. definitely 40 years i don't ago. i don't know in real time life what they had in my own view of the dumbledores i feel like they had already been 
ridiculed enough with Dumbledore's father and his old whole thing being sent to Azkaban and whatnot for, you know, going after the muggles, right? And so I feel like they didn't want any more of that because Albus was on his way to making something of himself. And I feel like she didn't want to interfere with that at all. And I feel like more was put into Albus rather than Aberforth because of the way that he like talks about his brother. Cause you know, the golden child, the, ch- the chosen one of the Dumbledore family. Right. So I feel yeah. like this is one of those instances where it was probably like, Nope, we're going to deal with this on our own. And. But like, I wonder if there were any. I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I also don't my, think there were any options. Cur- I don't think yeah. there were any options. And I think that until like Dumbledore. Okay, I can't say Dumbledore. Albus, I think for the most part, until it was too late, was just worried about himself. You know what I mean? When he was a child, yeah, basically. Yeah, he I mean, literally, there was, uh, the summer, it all happened where, like, she died and all of that. It, he was 17, 18 years old. You know, he just graduated from Hogwarts. So, like, I get it. Um, like, what, like, I, I, they probably were thinking, like, what could we have done? What resources were out there? You're already, like, you're already stigmatized from the events that happened and your sister is an ex-hero. Like, there's just a lot of things that were hindering life for the Dumbledores, you know? Yeah. It's just like, we're go ahead. I was going to say like looking like we just have high, you know, hindsight's 2020. So like Mm -hmm. looking back and I'm sure like this is because we've talked about this a ton with Dumbledore. Like that's probably one of his biggest regrets is like, he wished he could have gotten her help. But like at the time, what is help? Yeah. Right. Um, I also really like what Vanessa said about how, you know, we see that we can help children who have something similar um, as mm-hmm. she does. And we see that actually in the first Fantastic Beast. Like, um, Credence is spiraling out of control. He's literally in like his obscurial cr- cloud. And um, Tina tries to talk to him. And mm-hmm. it's that could very well work. Like, he kind of mm-hmm. like chills down. He's ready to yeah. listen, maybe open up. Tina was almost like yes. giving him therapy. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, had he had the opportunity yeah. to continue with that, maybe he could get it under control. So maybe there is no point of no return because like, look how far gone they showed Credence. Right. And I mean, Tina was uh, able to rein him in by talking to him. Right. Yeah. And then also like there were, I think that, I mean, I would think that they're at, at least, you know, in Newt's time at this point, there were clearly some sort of like experimental things going on because Newt was able to remove an obscure an obscurus from a child now the child didn't live but he was able to do it and the fact that he was able to do it I would think means that with more research and practice that could be an actual treatment that they could do going forward well and there's there's been a history of a lot of experimental um, treatments within mental health. Mm, yeah. um, something that I really love uh, that I mentioned earlier is like the history of basically anything, but the history of psychiatry is interesting because they didn't really have any medicine to help until like antipsychotics, Thorazine in like the 60s. <laughs> um, and so before that, I mean, they tried everything from lobotomies mm-hmm. um, to mm-hmm. um, electro shock therapy, uh, electro consult therapy, consult, cons- electro cons. <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> ECT. ECT. <laughs> um, which we still use today, which actually does work. Um, it was very debilitating back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, I mean, we've got it. We still use ECT today. It actually does work. Did a Kennedy have a lobotomy? I think one of the, I think a daughter yeah. did. Yeah. Because um, I remember well, finding yeah. that out and I was like, I mean, that's what they thought was yeah. It's it's fascinating too like when you learn about <laughs> when you learn about your brain and like how your brain does such a good job with like the, the blood brain barrier like that a lot of the drugs like that 
Like it would be easy to fix some of these solutions if you could get like dopamine or serotonin or these things like in your brain, but you can't just take uh-huh. a pill because the blood brain barrier literally won't let it go through. Um, so uh-huh. I mean, it's just fascinating when you learn stuff like that, you yeah. know, and how this is this, like, this is the reason why it's just a chemical imbalance. You know what I mean? Oh, um, uh-huh. Pharmacology is fascinating it's, to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like when you, I say this cause I'm now in anatomy and physiology and all that stuff. But like when you really like sit down and learn, it's ridiculous what the body does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How much it compensates, but then at the mm-hmm. same time, how one little tiny imbalance yeah. that we can, we don't even really understand yep. can throw you off. I mean, most of mental health and this is just in, in the real world is, we don't know the cause. So like the definition of mental illness is literally just like the symptoms because we don't really know what causes most mental illnesses. We know there's some sort of imbalance. Right. We're mm-hmm. pretty sure uh, they often have a link to our biology, but we don't really understand them. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's like why science is always evolving. Cause you're always researching, you're doing new things, you're learning new things. But also like I was taught when you are learning anatomy and physiology, that's not a hundred percent of people. You know what I mean? There are people that they, they're all of their anatomy is switched in the body. Like, so not everybody has, it's all, you know what I mean? It's just, it's crazy. It's just crazy. There's some people born (laughs) with one kidney. There's some people born with three, you know? Yeah. So wild. Um, for those of you wondering, and I know you are, it was, um, Rosemary or Rose Kennedy. So she had, um, some seizures and violent mood swings. And so her father arranged for a prefrontal lobotomy in 1941. She was 23 and it left her incapacitated. Oh, Lord. yep. Ouch. Yep. Indeed. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I remember finding that out and I was like, I don't want to say it cause it's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> What say Oh yeah, I've tried I have tried to keep what I've said PG thirteen. <laughs> I think I've done You've done well. well. But <laughs> no, yeah, you're good. My podcast is not, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll tr- well, your your crossover episode will keep PG thirteen for the people Yeah on, coming over. Uh, your guests <laughs> listening. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Tis all Tiff. Tis all. All right, everyone. So Because this is very lengthy, we're going to actually split this into three episodes. So this is going to be the end of part one, and then we're going to have a second part and a third. I I have a feeling it's going to be four parts, but who knows? (laughs) I can't see it in the future. Remember when we thought it was going to be one? Yeah. I, I, I was like, we need to split this up because it's a hefty topic. Um, we definitely there's a want lot to do to it say. justice. Yeah. yeah well, you know, there's a lot to say, and we're all talkers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how. So with that, we're going to go right into the lightning bolt round for this episode. So we're going to get that pulled up on the Discord. Megan, you may proceed. Hi. So it's me. Um <laughs> She's still here. (laughs) Literally. Sorry. Every week I struggle with trying to pull up these ding dang lightning bolts. And literally I failed so hard today. So what lightning bolts? Ding Ding dang. Ding ding. Uh, First, I first I actually like called them and and used the little lightning bolt symbol so so now my first attempt is saved as a lightning bolt question oh yeah. good uh, <laughs> i see yeah. it megan asks <laughs> lightning bolts <laughs> oh, geez. i uh, okay anyway akio amelia asks if you could have any job like an archaeologist or whatever not based on income but happiness what would it be archaeologist exactly what i'm doing right <laughs> yeah. now or podcaster. I would do um, like something with travel. A travel. Like if I could, <laughs> if I could have a travel blog without writing it. <laughs> so like a travel Instagram. I'll write That's it. I would do. Can I travel with you? And then I'll type your thoughts. Maybe. I'll carry your backpack. <laughs> well, like, and I say Maybe. this because like I, and this is such a first world problem. I really, really am struggling with having not gone anywhere. Like I miss 
I miss not being in Ohio. You know, what I, I, mean? would I miss get, going. I, I would get on a plane if that lets you know how much I miss travel. <sighs> I would willingly get on a plane. <laughs> Well, and it's affecting mental health for people. I mean, for a lot of people, yeah. travel is that's their outlet. How they it's cope. it's been really it's been really hard. Honestly, I think a lot of what drove Katie and I to move as fast as we did was my like craving of travel. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, if we can't travel to Florida, we're gonna move there. <laughs> I have spent so much money on home improvement projects because I'm just like sitting in my home looking around like, yeah. oh, well, I could put another shelf up there. We, I <laughs> built so many things during quarantine. I painted most of the upstairs. There's still more to paint. Um, there's still more things to build. We like decided to get essentially like a home gym at my parents' house. So like, it's just crazy. I'm like, gotta keep busy. Now I'm like, I have no time for anything. I'm like, I gotta do all of these things. And it's like trying to keep myself busy. So I'm not focused on the fact that I am stuck in my house. Could be worse. It could be worse. (laughs) I think that I would also do, I would do, um, well, first and foremost, honestly, podcasting, content creating in general, like YouTube podcasts like that's my jam um and then if I could add like a layer on top of that it would totally be like a travel journalist but not through a vlog through or not not through a blog through a vlog I would want to vlog it I wouldn't want to blog about it I'd want to record it and like take people around on my travels on YouTube and stuff like kind of like the bucket list family can I just be the bucket list family like that'd be fantastic I just love them so much um you could be the Peaches Pale family. Oh, okay. Katie. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? Peaches we pale. can't take you anywhere. <laughs> no. That's my job. I can make everybody in the room cringe. I did it. You're like the cutest thing on the planet, though. You're too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, okay, the next question comes from Gabby Claw. Do you think anything was being done to try and reverse the Obliviate on Lockhart, or do you think they just kept him there to keep him out of harm's way? Um, well, I think they tried. They something. made like a comment about like h- that he has made some progress. Yeah, but like I mm, wonder, yeah. like, uh, what are they trying? Um, I would, I wouldn't be shocked that the progress would be slow, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm no, I'm no expert, so. Well, and why would they even have, I mean, yeah. it's almost like counterintuitive because Obliviate is supposed to delete memory, yeah, right? right? Yeah, and it's there's almost not like, really a, there's like, not like a reverse spell. It would like defeat like, the purpose of the spell if there was a way. Yeah. I feel like they should it. at least try to set him up to, and I don't know like how this is affecting him making new memories and stuff. Cause we t- kind of talked about this in the, the episode that comes out after we or the one that we recorded, but, um, like how past, how does it affect episode. him correct how does it <laughs> affect him like making new memories and like so now he like before he couldn't when he was Ron and, and Terry didn't even know his own name but now he at least like responds to it and he wants to write so you can do all of those things but like right. I feel like they should be able I don't know should be able to um, make it so he could be successful not staying in the hospital and being able to like go and like live a quote somewhat normal life but like have basic life skills again but I, I don't know he's been there for two and a half years so yeah it's been a minute oh. that's just my opinion um, all right. <laughs> and that's Next all question? I have to say about that <laughs> yeah Carolyn asks um, this is personal so feel free not to answer if you don't want to but do you have um a real life bogart that you have been able to banish and what helped you do it. Does Ooh, I got it. have an answer to that? Uh, I got it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, does like being stuck in your shell and coming out of it because of switch and flick count? I think sure. So. I can tell you. Totes, yeah. totes I so. my goats that counts. Look at yeah. that little blossom. <laughs> blossom, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like I haven't completely banished my bog art because I still kind of grapple with it sometimes. But um, my uh, and I didn't have anxiety. I think I had a normal relative term. 
uh, level of anxiety before I had Lady Supreme. And then after, you know, I, I did have some postpartum. It wasn't severe as a severe, you know, I know some people can, can really grapple with it, but, um, you know, I stayed at home for months and months and, you know, didn't want to go out space things still get to me noise levels get to me like if if I feel like something's too loud I think a lot of that has to do with stay quiet because the baby's sleeping Mm. and so I do find myself like telling people to be quiet more often I found myself telling my students to be quiet more often Um, my physical space around me still gets me sometimes. So I still grapple with it, the noise level and the, the, the space, my space around me. Like, I think I said this on the pod before, literally when I came home from the hospital, my, my mother and sister were there and I think my mother-in-law was there. And so it was my husband and then new baby and dog. And then poor Matt, (laughs) my brother-in-law showed up with dinner for us Mm. and I flipped because there were too many people and my house is small and it set me over the edge and I will never forget that feeling because that's when I was like, oh, that's new. (laughs) Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? It really (laughs) sucks. Uh And, And I still deal with that now. Um... I talk about it a lot with Marty. I think I've talked to you about it before mm-hmm. too. Yeah. We talk about our anxiety all the time. My Yeah. Uh, and I was literally just saying is, this morning. My whole family's anxious like all the time. Well, I was telling Marty this morning. <laughs> I was like, do you ever get anxiety where you like, you play something out in your head, how something's going to go. And mm-hmm. then it runs like a flipping train. Mm-hmm. And it's like the worst case scenario. And you're like flying down this hill on these things that have, they never have happened. And they're yeah. pretty much unlikely to ever happen. Yeah. And you go with it. There was an event that took place yesterday that had my mind going. It was a horrific tragedy. And I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm experiencing some of that. Literally said this morning. He goes, yeah, don't do that. And I go, that's literally not what you say to someone who's going through that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, just don't be goes, sad. No, just don't be anxious. He's like, right? I know what you mean. He's like, I'm sorry. And it's like, yeah. yeah. So sometimes my brain does that, which is all sorts of funs and yeah. giggles. Sorry, I talked a really long time about that. But I feel like that's something that a lot of people go through. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Well, and that's the yeah. thing. Like, I... My my biggest thing is like I don't I didn't recognize that I had anxiety until I was like out of high school and I've had it probably since I think I remember like really going into high school and everything changed like with that. But like, again, I come from a family of like, honestly, like my mother gets anxious every Sunday. She hates Sundays like she's like, I don't know what it is. Like my dad's anxious, my siblings are anxious. Like and and sometimes like I just and better at grab like dealing with it than other days and like some seasons are better like it just depends on so um, have i defeated it no i think i'm gonna have anxiety for the rest of my life but um i can at least i recognize it now or like before i was like i don't know why i'm feeling all of these things and then like i think the internet was like oh hey this is anxiety and then really with like (laughs) being on it more and like with other people like swisher support and like the group and people are like oh i do that too and i was like oh my gosh i'm not like the only weirdo like other people like tiffany's saying has like the thing where you have one thought and it races through like this is exactly how this situation is gonna go and um my biggest thing is like walking into situations where like if i don't know what it's gonna be like and i think that like a lot of times it's like a family function. Like if I don't oh, know girl. who I'm, who's going to be there, what's going to happen? How are they going to react to me? Cause it all depends mm. on how they're doing that day. Um, am I doing this, this and this? And like that gives me anxiety. And a lot of times I used to like self medicate. Like I would like have a glass of wine or two before going to like say a family function. Mm. Um, and then I recognize like, that's oh, really hey. terrible. Yeah. Let's not <laughs> you do shouldn't this. do that. Um, yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, truthfully, uh, th- that's one of the reasons why I, uh, I mean, I know I had a glass of wine tonight, but, um, if I'm having a bad day, 
I will not, yeah. I will not well, drink. Like I will not affected, eat so like, something that's horrible for you yeah. because that's going to trip me into yeah. a habit that I really don't want to create. Like if I drink too much coffee and if I have had like too much wine, so like I'll yeah. take coffee breaks. I take alcohol breaks. Like I like sober I, September, I, baby. I love, I love an alliteration. So like I took the month of September off. So I'm calling it a sober September because like I need those breaks where like I'm not doing anything or like I'll take a couple of weeks off coffee if I'm like I haven't really been sleeping because that brings me anxiety. Um, well, we and like have... I've taken myself out of situations like I if I'm already anxious and like say there's like a family function and especially now with like COVID nothing's happening but I'm not gonna put myself in a situation that's just gonna bring me anxiety mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's hard for other people in my life to like accept that but um oh. not to say i don't care but i don't it's so. okay to say no yeah it's okay to say no and boundaries yes yeah, well, yeah. And that's something my family struggles with so <laughs> yeah um <gasps> i'd say like my for me my bog art is probably feeling trapped mm -hmm. um feeling like in a rut um i had like a very kind of controlling childhood and a lot of like I don't know. I just felt very like trapped in my circumstances. And so I spent basically my entire adulthood uh, running from place to place to place, different majors, different colleges. I mean, you, requesting transcripts for me is a freaking nightmare because I've been to so many schools. I understand I've that. All over the world. <laughs> um, I kind of but, have been to a lot too. What's that? I said, I've kind of been to a lot of uh, colleges and universities as well. When I think about it, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> I think I have four, five. I don't know four it's like 12 four universities for me, for me. <laughs> oh geez. i mean it doesn't help that i have a previous bachelor's master's and then a nursing degree and i'm thinking about another master's in nursing so <laughs> what they say about <laughs> people in education they're like do you really hate yourself that much that you have to go back to school again and again it's like yeah actually <laughs> i do <laughs> well, my mom because i have to go back obviously like i'm, I'm going for my rn then i'll have to go for my bsn and then i said to her i'm like if i'm anything like the rest of you fools i'm like i'll be going for more why so stop like, there never gonna be ending <laughs> And then she just laughs at me. <laughs> I think I'll I'll finish. I have part of a master started. I'll finish it later. I think I'm like due credits away, which is ridiculous, but it is what it is. Back to you. <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, it's totally on topic because like that was my biggest fear was just being trapped. And so I just, I did everything. Um, but then like about 10 years ago, I decided I was done with that and I figured out how to stay in one place. And um, I mean, speaking on ridiculous specifically, <laughs> like I like to make fun of, you know, my issues. I think that's what we all like to do. Um but I feel like, I mean, I've lived in the same place for like eight years now. I'm married, which is a commitment <laughs> um, that I was previously terrified of. Mm. I have two children. Um, I've been at the same job for a while. So like I call it a win. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I've learned, I've learned, I've learned how to commit. <laughs> Good for Good you. Job. I'm Legit. proud of you. I think um, I have two examples, I guess. I have one that. I haven't really figured out how to overcome and then one that I did. So um, one that I struggle with a lot is thinking that I'm a closer friend to someone than they view me. I've always like, I don't know what it is. Like I've always struggled with that where like, I feel like I like when I have a friend, like I tend to love pretty hard, I guess. I don't really know how else to explain it, but like when, and, and I think it's because I am an only child. So because anytime I like would have a friend that I would consider my best friend, I really like grasped onto them. And like, I never wanted to let them go because I was like, you're my best friend. You're who I want to hang out with all the time. Like sleep over my house, come over as often as you want. Like I've always been that type of, um, kid my mom always said that to me she's like you like get obsessed with people and I'm like <laughs> it's not that. like it's not that it's just that like the Mariah when... Carey song was written about Megan <laughs> <laughs> but, then, like, but, I, but I almost I feel like you. that has kind of like then stemmed into something else where it's like I feel like I have like these people that I consider like really good friends and then like my anxiety gets to me and I'm like do I think that 
I'm a closer friend than than they think that I am. And like then I just like double. Am I annoying? Am I going to ruin things? Uh, yeah. Am mm. I annoying? Am I being too pushy? Am I coming on too hard? Am I um, am I asking to do things too often? Right. Am I texting them too much? Am I sharing too much with them? Like I think those things all the time. You can text me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like. I, like sometimes I, I don't know like sometimes I'll actually like catch myself and I'll be like should I send this text message is this too much have I sent too many in like the past week like those types of things where I'll just like I'll like be ready to send a text and then I'll just like delete it and I'll be like no I, I'm like I'm being too extra or something like I just you know I don't know or like I'll like invite them to do things or I'll like give them a gift and I'll be like was that too much like should I not have given them a gift are we not on that All level right. yet like what's going on like that sort of thing um, Where's it's my just gift? something that, <laughs> that I've never really like I guess learned how to deal with I don't so I don't um I don't know how to banish that bogart it's just anxiety and that's my form of it um kind of like everybody else has said but um one that I did so one of my biggest bog arts for like probably the past three years was um my job I like just everything about that job just gave me anxiety I hated going into work um there were times where I would just like cry about going into work and and I I guess this is another form of anxiety, but like, I feel like, I feel like I hop jobs too much. Um, because I feel like I do this pattern where like, I find a job, I think I really like it. And then I'm there for a couple years and all of a sudden, like everything feels wrong with it. And I'm like, is this, is this my form of like, I don't know how to commit to jobs. Like, do I get scared because I've been there too long? And then do like, I manipulate things in my head and, tell myself that like all of these things are wrong when in reality they're not um go ahead Vanessa sorry I was just gonna say I'm no I don't think it's in your head because <laughs> first off and this is my spiel about unions but like back in the day people used to like retire at the same job mm -hmm. they'd worked at for mm -hmm. like 30 years right but that's because jobs back in the day gave like pensions and they had like proper HR unions what? and they had like you know uh, or <laughs> HRs and they had like a proper process for like problems that you have in your company but yeah. now it's such like a like a what is it the word I'm looking for like um like the company you work for can just do anything to you mm -hmm. and so yeah a job that might have felt great doesn't feel so great anymore because they're treating you like crap yeah yeah and I do Something that crud. we've talked about the, this as friends. And when we, we, we were talking about how our parents like perceive like the things that we're doing, our generation is different than their generation. One for the reasons that you said, Vanessa, and two, because our generation is realizing that life is also about being happy and doing things that make you happy. So just because a choice may not necessarily be like the safe or the smart choice, I'm doing air quotes. You can't see me. You're listening to a podcast. <laughs> um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not the right choice for that person. You know, theoretically um, I'll take me for example, me leaving a university and living at my parents' house for free Moving to Cleveland for a guy I had not even been dating for a year was probably not the best hey, thing to do. Hey, right? You got but me. guess what? I got me a salsa and I got me a Martinius Omelie and I'm married <laughs> and then we have a Lady Supreme and it worked out. And, you know, you just do, you got to do what makes you happy. So, Megan. Um, and you met me and Katie. Well, I mean, I mean yeah. And then I, we're no, I we're and, no Sasa and you and eventually Martinez. made me, met me. So, you know, win, win. Um, I will say this about like the whole job thing, like, and how back in the day when it looked good that you had worked at a place for so long mm -hmm. and my mom does, she's very good at like updating people's resumes and she's in a position where she's like, she interviews a lot of people and also lets people, um, to be wants them to be successful somewhere else or invites them. That's how she said it. She invites people That's to be my successful. My favorite in other way places. for her to fire. Someone. So 
And she's like, a lot of times now, like it, it looks good that you've done a couple of different things because it looks like you've adapted. And like, she always says like, stay somewhere. She's like, at least a year. You've done it for a year, whatever else, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we're like, yes, I've worked in a hospital for 11 years, but like, I've also worked in two totally different places in that 11 years that are literally completely different. Um, so you just got to do you. And who cares what people think? <laughs> At uh, the end, that's what matters. I mean, I agree. <laughs> you, you, you booskies. Yeah. Booskies. And, and I guess just like the point of that conversation is that like, um, for me, 20, 2020 has been so bizarre in so many ways and has affected people so differently on so many different levels. And, I feel grateful in the way that it affected me because it did kind of help me banish, banish my bog art that was my last job. Like I didn't realize how much my job was affecting me emotionally and mentally. And um, when COVID hit and people started quarantining, my job wasn't going to allow anybody to work from home um, because they didn't believe in the pandemic so I had to like go through to HR and basically demand that I work from home um, because I have asthma and my wife has asthma and I was worried and um, so I finally got them to agree to let me work from home but it was on a week by week basis however once I started working from home I realized how much just being there affected me because I was so much better being at home, even though I was still in that work environment and I was still having to communicate with those people daily, being at home made it bearable. It didn't make it perfect, but it made it bearable. So then whenever um, they told me four weeks later that I had to come back, even though mm -hmm. nothing with the pandemic had changed, literally nothing, um, I had a full blown panic attack. Like, I don't know if I've ever had a panic attack at the level that I had a panic attack in April when I was emailed to come back to work. Yeah, it was no good. I immediately started shaking. I started crying, like couldn't even get words out to Katie about like how I was feeling. And then it just hit me. I was like, this isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. Like this, this is not mm -hmm. worth how I'm feeling. Um, I like feel emotional talking about it because like it affected me right. so much. Like well, I you overcame it. Dude. I, yes. And, and just the fact that like, I think that what that proved to me and like what helped me with it is taking a step back from a situation. I kind of forced my job to allow me to step back and work at home. Um, and because of that, it made me realize that that was not um, the place for me and absolutely was it no and, and I just think that sometimes people feel stuck in their situations mm -hmm. and um I know it's really hard with a job because especially in America so much relies on having a job mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you don't have health care if you don't have a job you don't have yeah. a 401k if you don't have a job you don't have life insurance if you don't have a job like all of these things depend on your employment and it's really really difficult to force yourself to say, I need to take a step back from this regardless of the consequences. Am I happy now? Yes. Do I have health insurance? No. But guess what? It's worth, it's worth that because my mental health, even without like, even without having um, health insurance and access to be able to pay for a therapist or be able to go to the doctor if I'm not feeling well. Um, at the end of the day, it's more worth it to spend the extra cash if I super need to and be happy right now than to have stayed in a position where I literally felt crushed on a daily basis when I didn't even realize I was feeling crushed until I took that moment of self-help and self-realization and said, you're stepping away from this. So, yeah. and I will say that, um, once that was done, you had like a mood shift. Yeah. Like I it was, it, it was so noticeable and you guys are 
dare I say, thriving <laughs> down in Florida. No, but honestly, COVID like, literally changed my life. And like, I feel like grateful you that tell. I can say that it changed my life in a positive way because there are so many instances where it changed yeah. people's lives in a negative way. And it makes me feel bad for saying that. But also like. I have to realize as well that it's okay that it changed my life in a positive way. And if that's the outcome of COVID for me, then it's okay to like take that from it, you know? Yeah. No, I think you're doing pretty well. Preach. (laughs) (laughs) That was my soapbox for the episode. Took a while to get there. Um, but yeah, uh, honestly, like self care is so important and it's not easy to get there. No, it's it's really hard sometimes to sit down and say, I need to do this for me and I don't need to have an explanation for why I'm doing it. I just personally know that I need to do it. Um, And that's okay. I'm proud of all of you. Yeah. I love all of you. I love all of you. Okay. Love me. No, Can I also love me you. Three <laughs> more questions. And then we're done. Okay, yeah, three more. What a question! Okay. Forgot what we were. We were in the lightning bolt round with that one. <laughs> There's like five of us answering. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maui Potter asks. This is a fun one. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Except Hogwarts, because that's <sighs> an obvious for some people. Um. I would go to Ireland, Ireland and the UK, and if I'm allowed to travel in 2021, my tush will be there. Same, same, maybe, same, same. Maybe it's all Italy, of that same. or maybe like I don't know. I'd love to go to Paris Somewhere again. Somewhere with a beach. I just want to sit down in the sand. I'd also love to go to Salem again. Mm. Not mm-hmm. cold and rainy. I'll take cold, but. Well, you know Japan. what? Honestly, even if it was raining, I would just come more prepared. I would rather it not rain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cry I in mean, the pizza shop again with you. You didn't cry in the pizza <laughs> shop. I cried in the pizza shop. We both cried. I cried because I was laughing so hard. Okay, that's totally different. <laughs> Still tears. Meh. You know, Sarah, actually, um, my husband, I asked my husband that question last year. I asked him, you can, because we travel a lot. And I said, in 2020, this is before COVID, where do you want to go? And he's like, Boston. And I was like, anywhere in the world, (laughs) not the U.S., the world. And he's like, Boston. I was like, Boston? He's like, Boston. And I was like, okay, well, I get to go to Salem, so that's okay. Um, But he's really into Fallout. That uh, video game? Yeah. Apparently uh, it's in Boston. Anyway. Hey, live your dream, man. Live your dream. Yeah. Live your Bostonian dreams. Yeah. yeah. It really so is funny. super cool there, though. I'd I, also like I to go really, to Toronto. To Toronto? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like Toronto. I, too. I want to go to Toronto and see all of the filming locations for my favorite show, Shoots Creek. You guys knew I had to mention it sometime. I had to talk <laughs> about it on this episode at some point. Uh, yeah, but no, but honestly, I, I don't, I've been watching a lot of the bucket list family and their, uh, zero fear of the ocean has me so jealous because I'm literally terrified. But I think that if I were to find a place where like the water was so clear and beautiful, I might not be as scared. So I really think that I want to (laughs) go, I want to go someplace with super clear water. Um, I don't know if that's true. You, you might just, it's all about perception. Uh, you might, one person's still ocean might be another person's like frothing ocean. I just like, their, <laughs> their kids are so fearless of the ocean well, and like swimming with all of this wildlife. And I'm just like, why can't I be like Dorothy? I want to be like Dorothy. I want to be able to jump into the middle of open water and swim with a humpback whale. How old like, is Dorothy? Oh, well, I wouldn't do that. How old is Dorothy? Dorothy She's like three. is like seven. Yeah, that's because kids don't understand. Yeah. I think about that with <laughs> teens. Parents kids do well, it with hello them. Hello there. Kids are fearless, oh, Sorry, man. Discord's hilarious. But, <laughs> but even Garrett and Jess are just like them. I just, I just want, I want, them to teach me how to go in the ocean so that I can feel safe. Maybe you that's what I need. to push you into the ocean? No, that I need to brave? decide myself. <laughs> Tiffany and I went into the ocean together once. 
We're <laughs> <laughs> the only ones. My dad went snorkeling. Snorkeling. I was going to say scuba diving, which is incorrect. That was some of the best sauce I ever had in my life. Girl, that guac. Mm. <laughs> I have uh, another story to take over your podcast with. But Go for I, it. <laughs> so I've been to the Philippines because my mom's Filipino and my, they have a house there. And I brought my husband. It was the first time he had ever been out of the country, was to the Philippines. And we went and swam with whale sharks. Oh, geez. Ooh. And mm. I, I grew up near the ocean. So I'm fearless when it comes to water. Um, my husband is like a desert rat. He, he's like, he's from Arizona and he's lived his whole life in Las Vegas. So he thought he could swim because he's been in a pool before. Um, but even though this water was like crystal clear, uh, he nearly drowned and oh he gosh. accidentally kicked the whale shark <gasps> because he was trying to swim and he was like drowning. Oh no. <laughs> that would be so me had to rescue him. I'm not a- <laughs> I'm not a strong swimmer at all. Like I almost drowned in Lake Erie. But I've almost drowned um, in Mohican, which is like a place in Ohio, like in the river. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't swim well. Stories with Sasa. <laughs> see, this is why I don't go in the water. No. Oh, I mean, <laughs> and you'll see me to again. find the perfect waters in like the Bahamas. Did you just hear the story? And where are life in the water? My husband said no to the life vest. Say yes oh, to the I, life vest. I would have worn a life vest. Oh, okay. No okay. shame. <laughs> life vest. I, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like the bucket list family doesn't use life vests. I will say, uh, <laughs> when we went well, to Aruba, <laughs> when we went to Aruba for my friends, like kind of, it was like a girl's trip, but like also sort of celebrating like her getting married to so kind of a bachelorette thing. I booked a trip for all of us to go on like this pirate ship and you could jump off the side. And so it was like a huge group of people. Cause I've, it, it's not like I have the kind of money to rent out a whole boat for everybody. Um, and we had so much a boat. fun. Huh? A boat's a boat. But a mystery box could be anything. It's true. It could even be a boat. <laughs> you know how much we always wanted one of those. Well, like they all were jumping off the side of the boat and I didn't do it. And like I, I have regrets. I wish I had jumped off the side of the boat. Okay. We had such a good time. She has regrets. I do. It was beautiful. Talk about crystal clear water. I was only in it once because there were fish. And I just didn't like going to the beach with the people we were with. Cool. Yeah. What's um, the next question? Do we have any more? Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Oh, wait. I'd we... like to go to yes. the UK. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Didn't you. Answer. That's, That's the Katie. question we were on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to go to like a high tea. This is a multi-parter. Oh, have like a proper tea. I want a cucumber and cream cheese oh. sandwich. I'll mm. make you that. Come over. I got schwabels. Okay. Yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll be there. Nom, nom. Um, oh no, I didn't copy who asked this, but somebody asked Vanessa, what is your favorite thing about the wizarding world? Ooh. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, that's a hard question. Um, magic. <laughs> can I, <laughs> Very can good I answer, answer that? Absolutely. Is, amazing. That, I think is so. that too much? Um, magic. I mean, I love how much it can do. I love the imagination that's inherent in it because you can do so much with it. I love the entire universe they created. I love the housing system. Um, I love so much about the Harry Potter universe, but probably magic is my favorite part because you can that. do so much with it. I love that. I love that as well. Um, Essentially, you're saying that you love the essence of the Wizarding World. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, do. Hey. I, I do. Why did I not copy paste who asked this? Because you don't know how um, lightning bolts work. I'm and sorry. Okay, do this, I. Is the last, this is the last <laughs> one. Um, you guys mentioned a divination earlier, and I was thinking in the muggle world, mm. crystals are considered to have some healing properties with mental issues, anxiety, depression, etc. Mm. Do you think mm-hmm. crystals are seen as a weird thing in the wizarding world or as another form of healing? Oh. I, I feel like weird. I think it's weird. They because, probably think it's weird. Because of the way that um, people were getting things in chamber. Mm. Um, yes. And divination is considered very weird. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's a lot, there's of, a lot people of people think it's a joke now in real time life think that crystals are weird or like that's hokey. Like it's not going to be a real thing. But I also think like there's the whole 
e- placebo effect. So if you think it's gonna like, you know what I mean? You, yeah. you're putting out like, I literally bought a rose court ring so I can like, let me get my love life. Like I, you know, want whatever it's supposed to like you want to bring open your heart vibe. up to like, not only like loving like another person, but like self love, um, which I know people in my own life would be like, well, that's weird. But at this time, I'm like, I don't care what you think. But also, like, if you believe in it enough, you can, like, make it happen. There's something that's called, like, put it out into the world. It's going to come back to you or something. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, I have a friend who has MS, and she swears by the use of crystals. Dude, that's awful. She, she does it all the time. And her wedding ring is... Um, actually instead of like a diamond or anything it's like a like a natural crystal that she uses with whenever she like takes her time to like lay the crystals out and everything I, i've never used them so i don't like no proper you're supposed to charge them so i didn't know yeah. this so you're supposed to charge them and you can either do it so like i think one way you can do it is and i would also it depends like so mine is i have a rose court ring so like i um depending on like what if it's like something set in set in something Google before you do anything. Cause like I put mine in sea salt water to charge it. Um, and like, it could also like, I think if you did that, like say there were diamonds in it or something like that could ruin the diamond. So just Google it. Or you could, I guess, put it out. And I don't know if it has to be outside or just like in the moonlight on a full moon to help charge it. Cause like it makes, this is going to sound crazy to some people, but it makes sense to me that like, if if it's like attracting all of that, you just kind of want to cleanse it out and like recharge it. Um, so you got to do that like monthly or whatever to like kind of. Dude, I'm super into it. that. I'm and it, it makes that. sense in my brain. Like I had a friend that That's we were really talking cool. about um, tarot cards and she's like, well, like you got to kind of you want them to like be a little bit used. And I was like, no, I totally get what you're saying. Like you want to get a card, like a set of cards that like speaks to you, basically. Like I get it. Yeah, I didn't know know that there were multiple decks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Someone mentioned that to me. Um, I have a couple of things to add to that. Uh, There's a whole episode of "Don't Call Me Crazy," the podcast about crystals. Uh, Go listen. (laughs) (laughs) And then, second, are we talking crystals like the Muggle idea, or are we talking crystals like a potions ingredient? Because, like. I bet they're used. I bet you they are used. I bet they are. Ooh, and I bet you, like, if you do use a crystal, like, if there's there's different properties or different things happen, if, like, it's, like, quote, fully charged or, like, like someone Mm -hmm. in the Discord chat said, like, you could also charge them in sunlight. So, like, I wonder if, like, a stone has different properties depending on, like... Moonstone. It's it's been... Well, like, if it's Uh been out in the sun all day and that's how it was charged or charged in the moonlight or vice versa interesting so this is where my brain goes so moonstone was what people on the internet highway said that's how you get because that's um, used in the fable <laughs> <laughs> it is it is indeed i love you so no. much it hurts <laughs> legit um, moonstones are awesome i got meg one once um so that's for uh used in the draft the draft excuse me the draft of peace so it's used for relieving anxiety. Oh my god! Mm, I love that. I love full that. circle. All righty, Rue. That's all I got. All right. Before um, we end, oh, are we gonna do the whole spiel? I don't. I just want to talk about gonna, the butterberry made. That's all. Oh, I was just gonna do the social media spiel. Real That's fine. I need to have a joke. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, oh do it. Go don't ahead. Cry. What's your joke? Don't. What do Katie's I say, got jokes. We're not going to whine. Just tell me with your words. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even going to be worth it. Okay. Um, this is appropriate for this episode, actually. Which house throws the best parties? Ravenclaw. Yeah, Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have, I have something to ask. What comes before part B? Part A. Part A. oh my gosh all right if you guys want to follow us on social media we're on facebook at swish and flick podcast and also on twitter and instagram at swish flick cast make sure if you're on facebook that you join our discussion group which is swish and flick podcast group um if you are interested in supporting our podcast you can find us on patreon at patreon.com forward slash swish flick cast i actually updated all of the Patreon tiers 
a little early so you guys can see what's coming at what levels and all of the new things that we're supposed to be starting in October. Um, they are live on Patreon now. So um, thank you to all of our current patrons. Like we couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much. True story. Um, Wait, you raised your hand. That usually means that you speak now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say thank you to Vanessa, obviously, and I want her to go ahead and plug her podcast. Yes, yes please. Okay. Oh, hello, find you. hello. Um, so you can find me on Instagram. That's my main hub at Don't Call Me Crazy, the podcast, one giant word. <laughs> um, or you can find me. I know it's, it's a mouthful. Um, or you can find me at um, what wherever you find podcasts um i believe i'm on all platforms at don't call me crazy the podcast um i've also got uh on instagram i've got like a link tree so that if you have trouble finding it on whatever platform you're on you can go to that link tree and click on the link and there i am um my email if you want to email me anything is don't call me crazy dot the podcast at gmail.com um i'm also always in the market for guests so if any of the listeners want to talk with me about mental health and want to share their story i'm here to uh talk with you that's awesome i love that what a great invite i enjoy awesome all right I think we're just going to kind of wrap this up, but Sasa has news. What did we do yesterday? We did it. Well, I, it's really, what did I do? So we... That's rude. <laughs> well, I'm talking about just the <laughs> topping. Yes, we, you helped me with the I rest. I the butterscotch yes, that went into did, the topping. You did. And I told you, me. go ahead and add a little more. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. eventually these vlogs will be out, but we made... It's almost done. The cold butter beer well i'm currently uploading two weeks the other ago well. <laughs> um and there were some things i wanted to tweak on it like the main the whip topping was the main one and we were going to do frozen so that's what we did yesterday we made frozen butter beer mm -hmm. um and we're also going to tweak things with the frozen butter beer frozen part of it but when i tell you mm. when i tell you that topping was the topping that you get when you were at the Wizarding World in Orlando, or Correct I'm sure it's exactly the same as the other Wizarding Worlds around. Oh, my Lanta. Biscuits and gravy. It was so good. So good. It was so, it was spot so on. Good. It was spot on. Oh, like, I'm not kidding was you like, guys. It's not thick enough. I go, you've never seen it. I'm like, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, but Who's I didn't measure thing? anything except for the whip, heavy whipping cream. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So we did more fluff, same amount of heavy whipping, heavy whipping cream. And a secret ingredient. We put in butterscotch, which is what this the original recipe called for. And then some um, butter flavor, a little extra like artificial butter flavor. And whipped it longer. Mm. Yeah. It was so good. It was so good. Like I was there. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Mm. We're going to try um, hot butter beer next, but man. I want to try frozen again. <laughs> yeah. We like, could try that. We got, I we wanna, got it. I just want to drink hot, frozen butterbeer. Make guys, it hot and perfect need, it. We need to make it whenever we're up in Ohio in a few weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Yes. <laughs> Can do. We'll see what happens. Can it was do. really good. I, very, I was pleased with myself. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Vanessa, once again, thank you. Obviously, this is not our last conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because this is, I mean, I love Harry Potter and I love talking about mental health. So this is kind of like, it's the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Match made in heaven for sure. So this is part one of, I don't know how many parts because I don't want to say and have something be <laughs> definitive and then have to re-record things. Yes, Kate. Ravenclaw won the house cup this episode. Boom. <laughs> We should. There's two Ravenclaws here. Yeah, you're cheaters. Because we're so, the cool Exactly. House. And all, <laughs> of the cool, all the cool kids <laughs> in the chat, they know what's up. Sure they do. Kaka. They cheated. Kaka. <laughs> cheaters. Yeah. So, like I said, part one of a mini-parter. I don't know how much it's going to actually be, because who knows what's going to happen 
next time we record and it's a thousand hours but um just know that you're gonna get some detailed quality content coming your way all right that concludes this week's episode thank you so much for listening and don't let the muggles get you down <gasps> amazing just in my voice <laughs> okay. life uh uh finds a way <laughs> you're welcome This is my first time using Discord. Let's see. Can you pat yourself on the back, honey? There you go. I do that when I have to burp myself. (laughs) (laughs) Burp myself. I burp myself. (laughs) Just a super baby. Discord, we do have a special guest today. Yes. You've been guessing. And guessing. And, and you're all, all wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you never would have guessed. I... <laughs> okay. St. Mongo's, St. Mongo's, for my dudes and my ladies. <laughs>